if I'm thinking increase and I'm walking in increase and I'm believing increase, what happens is everything in your natural life begins to respond and to adjust until it realigns with the way that you're thinking. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg, and we are going to have another great week looking at positioning ourselves for great increase. Listen, it is God's plan for you to increase, and we spent last week having a look at scriptures, at the Word of God, that it's God's design, it's His desire for you, and He's planned it, and He's already set it all up. And He's given us the promises in the Word. And so if it is God's desire for me to increase, and I haven't yet seen increase, I have to ask myself, why? And so we're having a look and saying, right, what does the Word say about it? And how can we position ourselves so that we can experience that increase in our lives? Now, if you weren't with us last week, I really want to encourage you. You can go to our YouTube channel. It's there. It's available. You can get it. You can look at the programs and, and, and get the series as well. There's so many different ways that you can get a hold of it. But catch up because it is so important to make sure that the foundation is there. Because one of the beginning points is to know that God wants you to increase because over the years we can be conditioned by society, conditioned by life, circumstances, people, experiences, even religion can get us to a place where we wonder, do we even deserve to increase? I mean, if we do get an increase, isn't it just as God wills and if He really wants it for us, He'll make it happen and otherwise I must just put up with what I've got. And there's this whole concept, this thought concept that maybe we shouldn't be something we should even look for. If God wanted us to have it, He'll put it into our lives. And yet when you study out the Word of God, you can see that God's whole kingdom is built around increase. As I said, we already had a look at that last week, so I'm not going to spend any more time convincing ourselves about that. We take the Word of God and we renew our minds with it. Once we have those scriptures in place and those teachings, we can listen to them again and again and again. And by doing that, we renew our minds to the truth. And so we've established it is God's desire for you to increase. He wants you to increase. He's prepared it for you to increase. He's planned for it and He's ready to do it in your life. And so now this week we're going to see how can I change my mind so that I can position my thinking because very often it's my thinking that stops me from getting there. Well, let's just have a look once again at Matthew chapter 25. This is that parable that Jesus gave about the kingdom of God, the way it works. Verse 14, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like. And so obviously here is giving us some principles as to how the kingdom works. Now with any of the parables that we learn, you must remember there are the spiritual truths to it. Then there are, of course, the, the mind, the renewing your word to what God says. And then there's the practical outworking of it. So very often uh, we can see God doing a certain thing. And if he's trying to transfer a spiritual truth, the fact is that if he's trying to teach a spiritual truth and he uses natural examples to give us the spiritual truth, he'll never use a natural example that actually violates his kingdom. So sometimes people say, yeah, but that was for the spirit. You know, you can't really put that in the natural. No, why would God do that? If, if, it, if it doesn't work in the natural, then he wouldn't use that as an example. So I don't use something that is sinful or wrong or immoral to try and teach a spiritual truth. Jesus will use something that he is working in the natural life. And he says, if this works in natural life, well, that's because there's a spiritual truth causing that to happen. So when we see here this parable here, it can be true in terms of soul winning, in church growth principles. There's, there's leadership principles in here, and there are business principles in here. I want to have a look at it from the perspective of natural application. And he says here, the kingdom of heaven is like. So here's the example. It's a man that travels to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And as I said, in the spiritual aspect, that would be Jesus going to the far country called heaven. And then he leaves the earth in the stewardship of you and me, his church. 
And so now he's addressing the church as three different types of people here. And to one, he gave five talents. Now, it's interesting when you have a look at a talent, uh, there's different ways to measure it. If you're using it as gold, if you look at the gold standard and the price, and I'm not even sure what date I looked this up, but the, 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 at the time of exchange, the gold price for one talent was about $1.25 million. So you can see Jesus is not talking in small money. This isn't five cents or five rand. No, we're talking about five talents. That's like $6.25 million. And then he says to another he gave two. That two would be $2.5 million. And to another one talent, that's $1.25 million. Now, he gave to each one according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and he made another five talents. So he multiplied his money. He went from 6.25 to $12.5 million. So he had traded and he produced increase. And likewise, he received two, gained two more. So, but he who received the one went and dug in the ground and he hid his Lord's money. I've heard people, you know, in the natural, in, in the world, they say things like, we've got to look after God's money and we've got to be good stewards. Now, yes, I totally agree. We must be good stewards. How are we going to be good stewards? Just hiding the money, keeping it, not spending it. We'll see what happens. Yeah, how Jesus responds to that. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he had received five talents, came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you've delivered to me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents besides them. Now listen to Jesus' response. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So here we see a man causing increase and Jesus commending him on it. In fact, if you go back and look at the parable, he never even gave him an instruction to multiply it. This man just decided to go ahead and use what he had been given to increase with. And Jesus congratulated him and then, in fact, promoted him, made him a ruler over many things. We say the same response with the one with two talents, but then the one with the one, it comes back and he says, Verse 24, he received the one talent, came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you've not sown, gathering where you've not scattered seed. I was afraid. So fear was his motive. And he went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. His Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. Isn't that an interesting response? That this man who seemingly had looked after everything, I can almost see him saying, well, look there, I haven't used any of it. Yeah, it's all there and it's all yours and it's all back to you just exactly like you gave it to me. He said, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew I reap where I've not sown. You gather where I've not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers at my coming. I would have received back my own with interest. Now take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given and you'll have an abundance but from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. So yeah, we see Jesus wanting us to have abundance and he prepares us for it. Now, having a look at that, even this man who said he didn't produce the one, Jesus may have said, look, even if you don't know how to multiply, get involved with someone who does. The bankers can help you multiply and increase it. So if I use that in my own natural capacity, there are certain things that I struggle with. Maybe I'm not able to do something but doesn't excuse me from getting the job done. I can find others who are well able to do it. You know, we work in this ministry as a ministry of partnership. I may not know all the technology behind television. I do know how to teach, and I also know how to work with partners. And so we've got a great team that understand the technology, the, the recording and the editing and the processing and the transferring and the transmitting. And the, there's so much that happens to get this program right there into your house. And so I didn't have to know how to do all of that, 
but I can work with people to get it done. And that's the whole idea of the kingdom of God is working together so we can see increase and see abundance happening. Now, the key I want to draw you to is verse 15. The one got five, the other got two, and the other got one. Now, sometimes we can say, but that's not fair. That's something we need to renew our mind to as well, is that God is a very fair and just God. And I'm not going to accuse Him of being unjust. So sometimes people land up with more than others. And we can say, but how can that be? Doesn't God love everyone the same? Of course He does. He is love. And He loves each one of us. But He's well aware of our abilities. And He says here, to each one it was given according to His own ability. And when that statement jumped out of me one day, I knew this parable, I'd read it many times before, studied it, taught even from it. But one day that sentence just is like it highlighted in my mind to each according to his own ability. I realized that when I look at my life, the capacity that I'm working at, everything I'm managing and handling, it was exactly what I was able to use. And sometimes we say, yeah, but I need more and I want more. And there's nothing wrong with needing or wanting more because that we've already described and studied is God's desire for you. But then how come I'm not seeing more? And it's very easy to start blaming people and saying, well, it's because of this person and that one didn't deliver. And I had a bad start in life. I had a wrong education. I was born at the wrong time, the wrong gender, the wrong color, the wrong education, the wrong, you know, we come up with all these different reasons. And some of them may be valid at a time, but it's how I approach that situation. So even the guy with one talent, he could have used his ability to multiply that talent to become two. Now he's a two-talent person. And if he's grown and learned through the process, then he can do exactly what the two-talent guy did. Even if Jesus didn't give him two, he now has two, and he can take that two, and he can put it into practice and immediately start to multiply to become the four that we see the guy with the two became. So when I saw that, I said, you know what? I don't care what my background was, what my history was, what my education was. I'm starting with what God's Word says. And if my ability is what's limiting me, then I need to break through that, lim that limitation. And that's what I want to do this week is start having a look at saying, what is it that's holding me back? What's keeping me from stepping over this line? In other words, I want increase. I'm sure you do too. That's why we're watching the program together. Is you are going to increase. That is God's promise. I guarantee you, you're going to increase. But as you start to increase, you're going to find there's a ceiling that you hit. And it's been proven. There are people that have sometimes won the lottery and have got millions of dollars, pounds, whatever country they may be in. And then they've gone back years later to go and do, just see how these people are doing. And some of them are worse than before they won the lottery. And how, what happened to all the money? Because they were stuck in a mindset and the lottery tried that extra money was out here. But the person kept banging against the ceiling and when that happens, something in our makeup, just like this man, out of fear, he got stuck. Is people get stuck at that point. And if we're not aware of that, then that person uses up all that money and don't even know where it went. It's just, it's gone because that's the, the lifestyle, that, that's the limitation of their thinking. And so what we need to do is if there is a ceiling that I keep banging on, what I want to do is move that ceiling. How do I increase that ceiling? Because if God wants to take me exceedingly abundant above what I ask or think, Ephesians 3 verse 20, then I need to change what I think. And that's where we're going to have a look at. How can we renew our minds so that we can get to the place and experience this increase that God has for us? See, the Bible says in Psalm 115 verse 14 that the Lord will give you increase more and more you and your children. So if the Lord is increasing you more and more, then wherever you are today, you're going to increase more. Now, if you're at this new level of increase, and go read this verse, it says He will increase you more and more. That verse is always going to be valid every time you go read it, no matter where you are in life, whether you are one, two, or five talents, one million dollars, two million dollars, 
or $5 million. It doesn't matter where you are in life. Then if you read that verse, God's going to increase you more. And so there's no limitation to this. So I want to renew my mind and stretch out and begin to see what God has for me. Well, if you have a look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 27, the Bible tells us that Jesus saw two blind men and they were following him. And they cried out saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when Jesus came into the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said to them, Do you believe I'm able to do this? Isn't that an interesting question? They're asking Jesus to heal them. And his first question is, do you believe? Now, one would say, but then why are they asking? But he's trying to get a point across here. And then they said to him, yes, Lord, verse 29, then. If you have your Bible with you, just underline the word then. So in other words, there was the qualification question. Then Jesus touched the eyes and said, according to your money, let you be healed. No, according to your race. No, according to your church. No, according to your faith. Let it be to you. In other words, the level you were prepared to access my grace, the moment you did that, what happened? That grace flowed, the power entered them, and then, verse 30, their eyes were opened. So the problem isn't that God has supplied it. The problem has been on my receiving side. So their healing was available, but this, they had to say, we believe. And when their minds were in the right place, Jesus was able to move in and do the miracle in their lives. So the problem is that I have this covenant of increase, but if I haven't seen it, the problem's been on my side, not God's side. You're getting a hold of this. So that's why we're going to take time this week. And I want you to make sure, make a plan now to be with me every day, because by the end of this week, by Friday, you are going to be in a place ready to receive everything God has for you. And hallelujah, then we can walk in the fullness of it. Good. Now, have a look at Proverbs chapter 23. Now, this is a powerful, powerful scripture. Proverbs chapter 23. And have a look at verse 7. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That, that's you. Where, as a woman thinks in her heart. So what's the Bible saying? The way that I see, now you understand when we say heart here, we're not talking about the blood muscle, the blood pump that pumps blood around you, that heart, that's your physical heart. This heart is talking about this deep-seated thought that happens within your spirit. That's the very, that's what science has discovered is the subconscious mind. That which happens without us even thinking about it. As a man thinks in his subconscious mind, so is he. In other words, what you see me today, where I am, what I'm doing, the success that I'm walking in, all that's happening around me, that's exactly where I think I should be. We are all exactly where we think we should be. And I know sometimes people say, no, Pastor Alan, I want to be way beyond that. Yeah, I know. That's what we're thinking in our natural minds. But our spiritual, our, the, the, the heart part of us, will always keep us responding in a way that will keep us where we think we deserve to be, where we think we're able to be, what we are able to handle. Now, the good news is we can renew that. We can change that. So if in my natural mind, I think I should be further, I can change the way I think in my heart to be that. And then as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Then my natural life will line up and respond to those thought processes. Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said, If you can believe, all things, all things are possible to him who believes. Isn't that awesome? Think about that. All things are possible. Some people say, well, I don't know, that doesn't make sense. I, I don't think that's possible. No, Jesus said, all things are possible. So in other words, if you can think it, that thing is possible. Now, maybe technology doesn't allow for it today. Maybe our limited thinking of the current moment. But there were people that years ago didn't think it was possible to get to the moon. They didn't think communication was possible across further than what I can shout. And yet today we're talking to people on the other side of the planet because of technology. So things can happen. And all things are possible if you believe it. 
And that's what we're working on here. Matthew 9, verse 27 to 30, he remembered, ended off by saying, according to your faith, let it be. And so what we want to do is stretch our faith. Remember, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And the more I hear the word, the more I renew my mind to it, I keep expanding my thinking. I increase my thinking to become increase minded and increase motivated. And if I'm thinking increase and I'm walking in increase and I'm believing increase as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And what happens is everything in your natural life begins to respond and to adjust until it realigns with the way that you're thinking. So don't miss one single session. We're going to take time and see there are specific factors that have limited our thinking in the past, but we can use those exact same factors to change the way that we think. So we'll get back together again to have a look at that in this week. But in the meantime, watch this and then I'll share something with you afterwards. I'll see you there. The most important weapon we've got is our shield of faith because it will stop every attack of the devil. You're still breathing. You're still in a body. You still got time. If you haven't walked in the fear of God, you can make the change today. It tells me what Christ has done for me. It tells me where I would be without him and who I am because of him when he adopted me as his child. First came the act of obedience. Second came the anointing to achieve the assignments. If you are a Christian, you have the answer that they are literally dying for. It is time for the church of Jesus Christ to stand up, wake up, go into the enemy's camp and get back everything that was stolen from us. Hallelujah. God is increased mind and mind. The Word says that it is God's desire to increase you. Nobody can stop you from increasing. Increase, increase. No one, no one, no one. God has given us the ability to change our future and to make increase a part of our lives. God has already designed you for increase. In this empowering series, Alan Back will teach you life-changing principles on how to press into your future of increase. Every one of us desire to increase in some way or another. You learn that it is God's plan to increase you. I have to increase my capacity for increase by increasing my increase, increase, increase. And the influence that good company has on your future. It's time to grow and it's time to increase. So get yours today and enjoy that. So get this series and see increase manifest in your life through your covenant with God. Contact Alan Back Ministries at these details and order your series today. In the series, it's an eight part series where I'm going to great detail from the Word of God about how important it is to make sure that we have our minds correctly established in order to receive what God has for us. It's an amazing truth if we think about it and the way we've looked at it from the Word that literally God is ready to do anything that He has ever promised. He's already, in His mind, it's done. But we are the ones that land up limiting Him. And if we can take those limits off, well, God's provision and His health and His promises and everything that He has for us is literally unlimited. And so I want to get my mind to a place where I'm literally unlimited in the way that I think. And that's going to be done by listening to the Word again and again and again. So make sure you get yours today and take time to listen to it over and over. Put it in your cards, even on MP3. You can put it onto your phone so you always got it with you. By listening to the Word, renewing your mind on a continual basis, you're aligning yourself with the kingdom of God. And God is able to do great things in your life. And so get yours today. Now, my friend, the most important place that we can renew our mind to is how much God loves us. He loves you so much that He gave His Son Jesus to die for you and give you eternal life. Some may say, but Pastor Alan, how can you say that you don't know what I've done? 
Well, that's the good news. God knew a long time before you did it that you would even do it. And even before you did it, He already planned for Jesus to pay the price for it. So that when you find out this good news, you could be freed from it and forgiven and start your life brand new as a born again child of God. And so if you happen to be watching this program and you've never yet prayed the prayer that commits your life to Jesus, I want you to do it right now with me. There, while you're watching, just say this out loud. The Bible says, with the heart one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth you confess to salvation. Let's do that now. Say this, dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You gave your life for me. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe that. And so I call you Lord. You are my Savior. And right now, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. From today, I live for you, to honor and serve you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. If that's the first time you've prayed that prayer, I have a gift for you. This is a card that's going to describe what's just happened in your life, as well as some guidelines now that you are a Christian. This is a great study program. It's going to help guide you through the Bible. You just read every day the scriptures that are on here, and within one year, you'll read your Bible cover to cover. How great is that? And then this great CD, My Christian Passport, Out of This World of Failure into His Kingdom of Victory. Those are life-changing confessions that are going to help develop and strengthen your faith. Now, I want to sow that into your life. It's a free gift from us to you. We'll even pay the postage. Please just call us on that phone number or write to me at the address over there. And when we get your details, we'll send that to you. Welcome to the family. That's all we got time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bagg. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Alan Bagg Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. At allenbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership, as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. Whether you're looking for information about Allen Bag Ministries, or if you'd like to come alongside us as a partner, we invite you to visit us at allenbagministries.org, so that we can be part of your community and help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org, equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.